To the glory of God, on behalf of my colleagues, we unveil these five books compiled in honor of our mother, Justice Mary Ukego Peter Audley, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, the fireworks at the background are part of the high point of this special of a library of books, five different books on different aspects of the law. The tool that served the Honorable Justice Mary Peter Dele effectively for 44 years of excellent and outstanding judicial career. And leading the the League of the Governors to do the presentation after the unveiling is the host governor, His Excellency Chief Nyesom Ezenwo, Wicked CON, GSSRS, Power of Sports Africa. Please put your hands together. As the books are being presented now, the number of governors you have here is enough to form the Governors Forum. And first daughter of Nigeria, who has done fatherland and state justice, Mary Peter Odili, who ran through the four layers of the judiciary and becoming the equivalent of the judicial air vice marshal, if she were in the Air Force, four star general. Things like this are happening. A gift of a book is a gift of the source of knowledge. All who are here are witnessing this very inestimable gift to all who are here to grace this occasion. Thank you, Your Excellencies. Thank you, my lords. Thank you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands together once again. I would want to correct an error in the program. I, am the vi I was the Vice Chairman, Legal Practitioners Privileges Co Committee, LPPC, not the chairman. The chairman is the Chief Justice of Nigeria. A lot have been said about me. A lot of encomia. I find them very difficult to accept because I, I just don't see myself operating on that Golan height. The only one I acknowledge and proudly say is that I'm a very good grandmother. <laughs> I say so because when our first granddaughter was about four years old and somebody was talking about me going to work, she said, grandma has no office, grandma does not go to work. What? She, she sits down and watches television. <laughs> My granddaughter could say so because we were always watching television and of course we were watching Cartoon Network and she never saw me writing. And so I took it that she must have felt that I gave her a lot of attention. Otherwise she would have felt the loss of attention was explainable by Nebia was writing judgments. She never saw me with any book or pen. And so that I acknowledge I am a very good grandmother. I thank you all distinguished personalities from all corners 
of our country and from abroad who have taken the trouble, time and expenses and made sacrifices and sacrificed your convenience to be here to honor me, Peter and our family. We are very, very grateful. I thank all those who put up these books that have been unveiled by the Governor of River State, the editors, the authors, apart from myself, my judgments that were captured. I also would acknowledge with thanks, thanksfulness the Secretary of the National Judicial Council, Sally Gambo, who has been very supportive of myself. When my Lord Justice Kekareku was speaking, she made mention of my capacity for writing judgments and fast. They came from the punishments I got when I was in primary school. We left the East for Lagos when my father went to Lagos to take up the position of Secretary of Nigeria Airways. And we found ourselves in the school in Lagos. And I had not heard of the word imposition. So in the class, I was discussing with a few friends. And the teacher said, Mary, stand up and uh, the other two to stand up and that we have imposition. I said, what is imposition? She said, I will not disturb, write 50 times. So somehow, from time to time, even when I didn't utter a word, once she looked at the area where there was noise making, she said I should stand. So that got me into writing fast so I can get back into the lessons. That's how I got into fast writing. And when I got into the university, I found in the class four married women who were of childbearing age. And they didn't stop having children. And so the periods they were out of school I had to write their notes for them. And that also assisted me in being very conversant with the lectures that had, been that had taken place because in translating or transcribing those notes, I was learning. So that is the secret you were asking for. That's how the trick of writing fast was acquired. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I cannot help but have a little journey. I will not take as much time as the governor did. He had the executive power and could uh, decree anything. I will just take a little of your time. My emergence as a reverse woman is for tweeters. I met Peter in the University of Nigeria at a party I didn't want to attend. It was outside the campus. On sighting him, the moustache was what captured my interest. And I fell in love first sight. Somehow he met all the dreams and all I had read in those romantic novels of Mills and Boone and all those kind of things. The only problem I saw in the horizon was that he was not from Imo State or nearby because my mother did not envisage any of us marrying outside Imo State. 
I put it in prayers. I did novenas. Monsignor Key will understand what novenas are about in the Catholic Church. And I used St. Jude's novena, which um, religious uh, prayers I got at St. Dominic's Catholic Church in Yaba. That's where I saw how it is done. So nine days novena, I prayed that since this man came from far away, God should make it possible for my parents not to have any objections. And fortunately again, Peter attended the same secondary school my father attended, Christ the King College, CKC on Nature. Peter was in the first, first eleven of his uh, football club, of the football um, uh, um, football um, team in the school and my father was also first 11 football team in the same secondary school I knew those things would soften my father's heart and so when I made mention to them of this man from Ndoni and we, we had never heard of Ndoni before they said, what, what country is that? <laughs> I said, the place is about two hours from Oweri. My mother said, hmm, I knew you would carry us to where we don't know. But fortunately, Peter had told me two eminent people from his community who came from there. Interestingly, the father of Osijo Okocha's wife, Professor Emeko Oyolo, came from there. And the professor was my father's classmate in the same CKC on Echa. And then there was another man, this time a politician, Chief GC, GC Okeya. So my father said, there's no, and my father said, Chief G.C. Okeya was his political associate in the eastern region. And uh, Emeka Oyolu was his uh, classmate in CKC Onicha. There is no way those two men will be there and his daughter will suffer. My daughter, you can go. <laughs> that is how my father gave the blanket uh, com uh, consent and when Peter asked him for the list for the native law and custom that one my father said my son you have just graduated Mary has just been called to bar if they place two of you in the market square the proceeds from the sale of yourself and Mary will not produce the, enough for the introduction. So, carry my daughter, go and wed by special license, have the church blessing. When you are ready, you will come. I, I know you will come. That is my history as to how I came to River State. Today also marks the 35 years of the inauguration of the Women Lawyers Association, FIDA, in River State. And one of those five books and the magazine were put up by FIDA, River State, and FIDA, Nigeria. Interestingly, at that inauguration, the master of ceremony at the occasion happens to be the chairman of today's occasion, OCJ Okocha. We remain grateful to you for always being there to help us out of any bottlenecks, obstacles, or whatever. Your language power 
is in your blood. The governor and his colleagues have thrown my husband and I off the roof with their kind and generous donation for these books. We are very, very grateful to you all. My former colleagues, serving and retired justices of the Court of Appeal, judges of all various, of various jurisdictions who are here, distinguished members of the Nigerian community in the medical field, in engineering, in arts, and culture, captains of industry, the men and women who are here, our traditional rulers, we are very grateful for honoring the invitation of the organizers of this program and my dear husband. We thank you all. A lot has been said about judges, judgments, and corruption, and what have you. The truth be told, the Nigerian judges have not been treated right. And the truth has not been said of Nigerian judges, who, in my view, are the very best in the world. I have not delivered any judgment and not gone to sleep easily because my attitude to judgment writing or reaching decisions were defined by two events. While Peter and I were in Benin as a young couple and I was concluding my four months extension of youth service in the Ministry of Justice Benin City, I was pregnant. I went to work and Peter had told me to invite my colleagues for lunch. So when I got to the office, I invited them to lunch in our one-room apartment. It was a Monday. I went back home. I prepared the lunch, and my colleagues came. We all ate, bantered, and they left. In the night, I felt funny. And there, were, there was not much to it, because I recall watching a film on television man from uncle. I wasn't feeling too fine and I mentioned it to Peter who, who went, who drove into the hospital to get me antacids, I can remember. He brought them, I went to sleep and when I woke up I found myself in a small room with a bandage across my stomach. And when I asked what happened yesterday, I was told, today is Friday. You've been in coma for four days. That incident taught me that life is not something in the hand of any man or woman. And God can take it at any time. And so we have to be careful what we do. You have to defend what you do while alive. The second incident had to do with when I was appointed magistrate grade three and I was assigned to magistrate Omar Odion, who later became a judge of the Edo State High Court. On the floor, littered all over the place were records 
record books. I was flipping through and I saw all those great names of uh, the old Bendel states, that is what is now Edo and Delta. I was flipping through their judgments. I said, uh -uh, these are the great, these great men I've heard about. And these are their judgments. Why are they littered like this? Mrs. Omorodion told me, these are public documents. They are open to anyone to look at. So these two incidents, my health problem, and the fact that the record books of any magistrate or judge are for public perusal by all and sundry, defined my way of carrying out my duties, knowing that whatever I do, if God calls me that same day or immediately after the delivery of the judgment, and I am asked questions, I can answer. And so when all sorts of innuendos are made, the case in point is that of the Bayesa matter. Like I tell people, the case of Bayesa was a case decided by God himself. None of us in that panel foresaw what was going to happen. Everyone who read the file had their hands on the head because there was nothing else to do than to give the judgment to the person who deserved that judgment. People were asking, are you not worried? I said, I cannot be worried. Since God decided that this is the man who should occupy that seat, who am I or who are my colleagues to say otherwise? We had to do it as the law had detected that we do it. And if the heavens fell, too bad. That is the way it was. Some, of, some people said, well, with, with the closeness with uh, Bayelsa, why didn't you recuse yourself? I said, how can I recuse myself? Rivers and Bayelsa were one state. I was a magistrate and handled matters concerning the area that is now Bayelsa. I was a judge handling matters in areas concerning Bayesa. I didn't recuse myself. Is it this administrative division that was politically rendered that will make me recuse myself from a case I had been assigned to do? If I recuse myself on such cases, I will find myself out of work. And I have taken an oath of office without fear or favor. I didn't know the parties in that case. I didn't know the current governor. I didn't know the opponent. All I saw were names on the case file and justice had to be done. And so I am very happy that some of my judgments have been captured in print. And as I flipped through the judgments of those uh, big judges and magistrates of the old Bender State, my own judgments are now in the open for everyone to look at. All anyone can say is, 
she didn't apply the law properly here she did not understand the law properly but no one can ever say she gave judgment because of an interest in the matter also i will give credit to my husband for being able to write so much you see he does not know or and he didn't know that by being a medical doctor and when he, the, the the medical doctors they walk round the clock and when he opened his hospital very early we got married in 1977 he opened his clinic in 1980 and because of the orientation he had acquired from the university of benin teaching hospital i am happy professor dejumao my doctor is here and professor lino sajabo my husband's boss in the hospital he acquired the orientation of excellence from the university of benin he applied it in his own clinic and so when he made his rosters for doctors to be on call 24 hours or throughout the night he didn't know he was making a lot of time for me to have all the time in the world to write judgments i had nothing else to do the children would be asleep and at that time we didn't have this round the clock television so nothing else doing I started writing my judgments. That is how my own orientation into the judiciary happened and the flow that came to be. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I thank almighty God for the privilege he gave me and for all those who have assisted me one way or the other to get to the top echelon of our profession i thank peter for giving me all the encouragement and making life very happy for me Our children have been wonderful. I thank God for them. Peter and I may have tried as human beings, but I believe the children have made good if I can make that boast. On account of the biblical provision some somewhere in Isaiah where it was said your children shall be taught by god i believe he taught them that's why the presentation of the children is the way they are today my parents of blessed memory we are loving and put up everything to make sure we went to school and got to the highest level of education they made a lot of sacrifices for which i thank god my siblings have been simply wonderful we've remained very close over the years and like i said at the valedictory peter's family happens to be a unique one upon getting into the family they just took me as one of them i have not never been treated as an in-law i've always been treated as one of them 
his brothers took me as their younger sister, confided in me in all spheres, and sought my opinion and advice on anything. I have been very comfortable in my marital home, which is more like my place of birth. Again, God has enabled us to have relationships with Nigerians from all over the Federation who see us as family. And so we've never had to confront our challenges alone. We've had help here and there with some of those associates of ours taking on the matters as if they were the ones directly affected. This is an occasion where I will say a big thank you to all our associates from all over the Federation. And the attendance of a lot of my former colleagues here will attest to the fact that our relationships have endured. My friends, my colleagues, my former colleagues, all of you, I say thank you. The organizers of this program, I don't know what to say to you. All I can say, may God reward you abundantly for a wonderful program you've put up. The wife of the governor, you have, you have been exemplary. I lack words to put down the way I feel about you and your family, including the governor. The, the chairman said, when the women are elevated and are glorified, the husbands also should take, should also shine along. Our governor, please shine with her. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and le gentlemen, I can go on and on. I am overwhelmed. I am thankful. And Peter said I should say thank you and God bless you all. Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates. Thank you.